my name is Iris Franz, Wu Xiaolin Wan Ru. Today we're going to talk about factor endowment theory, also known as the HO model. So here's the bottom line of the model. If your country is relatively capital abundant, then your country has a competitive advantage in the production of capital intensive good. But if your country is relatively labor abundant, then your country has a comparative advantage in the production of labor intensive good. So here is our example. We have United States and China, and we have two different resource capital, that's the number of machines, and also labor, that's the number of workers. Now suppose the US has a hundred machines and two hundred workers, but China has twenty machines and one thousand workers. Now we're going to calculate the capital labor ratio in order to determine which country is relatively capital abundant and which country is relatively labor abundant. So in the United States, the capital labor ratio is the number of machines, 100, divided by the number of workers, which is 200, and you get 0.5, meaning on average, each worker has about a half machine to work with. What about China? The capital labor ratio of China will be 20 divided by 1,000, and that gives you 0.02, meaning on average, China, one worker has about 0.02 machines to work with. So you can see 0.5 is higher than 0.02, and therefore, US is relatively capital abundant, whereas China is relatively labor abundant. Now suppose we have two goods, aircraft, which is capital intensive, and textile, which is labor intensive. Now, U.S. is capital abundant, so you can see their production possibility curve looks like this, this blue line. And China's production possibility frontier is this red line. Now, suppose before we start a trade, then U.S. and China will both have to consume whatever they produce. So suppose the U.S. choose point A from this blue production possibility frontier, and therefore the U.S. chooses to produce and consume 7 units of aircraft and 6 units of textile. What about China? Suppose China has kind of similar taste. Um, so they have this red production possibility curve, and they also choose on point A, but notice it's point A on this red production possibility curve that China chooses. So China also chooses to produce and consume seven units of aircraft and six units of textile. Now suppose the two countries started to um, partially specialize and trade. So U.S. because U.S. is a relatively capital abundant, so it is going to partially specialize on the good that is capital intensive, meaning the aircraft. So they are moving from point A to point B prime. So that's us, the United States. So when we partially specialize, we produce 15 units of aircraft and one unit of textile. What about China? Because China is labor abundant, so they are going to partially specialize on the good that is labor intensive, meaning that's textile. So they're moving from point A to point B on the production possibility curve. So China also partially specialize, they produce 13 units of textile and only three units of aircraft. So that's our production, aircraft and textile. Now they're going to start to trade. So suppose the terms of trade is one to one. So US is going to export six units of aircraft to China and US is going to import six units of textile from China. So we can see that US produce 15 units of aircraft, but we're going to export 6 units of aircraft to China. So we end up consuming only 9 units of aircraft. And although we only produce 1 unit of textile, we import 6 units of textile from China, so we end up with 7 units of textile. What about China? Well, they produce only 3 units of aircraft, but the United States export 6 units of aircraft to China. So they end up consuming 9 units. And even though they produce 13 units of textile, um, the US import 6 units of textile from China, so they end up with only 7 units of textile. 
and you can see we both do better than before because that's the point of all Turkey where each country only has seven units of aircraft and six units of taxa. But after we trade, we both end up with nine units of aircraft and seven units of textile. So we don't both do better and we're ending up consuming outside of our production possibility curve. So that's the idea of factor endowment theory. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.